Hello and welcome to episode 2 of my Minecraft Feed the Beast Monster tutorial let's play series. This episode is going to be on choosing a world and starting a base before the dreaded night comes. Notice I've decided to make this a tutorial slash let's play series basically because it will be both and I will just set the timer to 30 minutes and see where we get to hopefully not blown up by a creeper. I want to start this episode though by showing you giving you a little glimpse of what you can expect in future episodes giving you a small look into a Minecraft fanatics mind so let's start by going to single player and going to new world one and showing you around a little this is the sort of stuff we'll be getting up to as the series progresses obviously this episode will be on a starting a base but here's a previous base I like to think I got a quarter of the way into this base Sometimes I've had to restart because one of the mods has corrupted the game or something else has happened or this or that But anyway, so Have a little look around now. This is long before I usually collapse a server But to give you some idea there are certain mods. I absolutely love one of them is applied energist energistics I absolutely adore this mod because you can not only use it to craft items, auto craft, but also let's see if I can give you an example by showing you something. Um, you're starting to get the message there. Do you see the little K? That's talking about thousands, but let's show you. I think you see I've set most of the items to a limit of uh, 10,000. But I still should have something, surely, which goes up even up. Well, there we go. Essences are on 25,000. My storage capacity, basically, I'm talking about. I believe I can store millions of items. Why? Let's take a little look around the back here or into here, into one of my drives. You can see that I... Are these my fluids or my extras? Anyway, you can see that I enjoy making some big storage for for this and I've even started on a second drive and we're going for the 1 million storage. So there we go, that's the applied energetics in the energetics. We're going to be getting into that. It works well alongside being able to limit resources because you don't want to get 10 million of an item that you don't really want and so I'm going to be showing you how we can set up machines like a furnace and we can set limits on how much we store of a particular item so say for pulverized tin dust I'm going to show you how we can set limits up whatever you want to set a limit that it will store that amount so it will craft 5,000 tin ingots out of the uh, dust once it reaches the limit it will then cease production of that item as I use them it will then continue automatically creating them this is what I love about Minecraft the manipulation of liquids and energy you can get this nowhere else but for the wonderful Minecraft now here is the reason okay why did I choose to play Minecraft monster I'll tell you why for one mod there is one mod that actually for me is the best mod in the game full stop let's show you now I'm not talking about miscraft miscraft is another one of my favorite mods to use because we can't go filling the area up with quarries because we'll come to a grinding halt so what we do is we use miscraft to travel to different welds I know it says hopefully stable but I have got the hang of it by this point so let's step through into this miscraft world and over here is the reason I love is this actually no that's not the right one let's go back to a different world oh wait a minute no here we are here's the reason I chose monster because of the umber awesome mod quarry plus check that out 
Look at the size of my quarry. It goes beyond your even your sight. I think it's something like 260 by 260. Don't quote me because I know I'm not exactly right. But I've got a humongous quarry on the go. And of course you don't want to chain too many of them around your base otherwise your PC is going to collapse or go into meltdown and I haven't even got into enchanting yet um, which I definitely intend to do in this series so as you can see that's miscraft it allows you to travel back and forth between different places let's have a look where's that one I've set them up for all different places customizing all different zones of different types um, another very good use though is this one of the things I love doing in Minecraft is sucking up the lava and then using it look at that I'm starting to drain the nether and I ain't even got started yet so there's another beautiful use for miscraft interlinking it with the nether to be able to travel back and forth and suck up all this lovely lava what do we do with this lovely lava let's show you so we'll hop back to our world and here we go i love i know i'm weird i'm a freak a total minecraft fanatic what i love doing is seeing how bigger tanks i can build and filling them up with lava in fact sometimes i even go as far okay as drilling all the way down to bedrock to start my lava pools because I like draining lava. Don't ask me why. Of course, it is a very good power source. That was a lava tank. I was. That's a work in progress. I haven't finished yet with it. I expect the one that I'm going to make in this series will be much bigger. Um, the beautiful thing about, of course, uh, Monster is we've just got so many mods to play with. So many experiments to try. Here's my um, magnetic dynamo power source just one of many that I like to experiment with and there's a resonant 5 million or is it 50 million anyway it's a lot of energy over there's my quarry plus uh, equipment and so I'm using all this lava for this power source just one of many power sources another power source I've uh, I like playing with which is earlier game is over here you'll find that I'm using steam dynamos now this is an all automated system up top it's harvesting wood pr providing wood for the furnaces the furnaces then turn that wood into charcoal which then powers my steam dynamos underneath I've got all the water running and so that's another energy source that energy source I use sorry if you're getting dizzy with all the spinning can't help it so much to show you Basically, that energy source I use just for my applied energy uh, energistics um, setup. My lava power source I use for my quarries. So you can see I separate them because if one of them runs out of power, not only do I want a backup power source to rely upon, but also I want uh, a second. A, uh, another means for the power now up here you'll see another power source that I've been using oh yeah check out that baby that's me auto crafting with um, applied energistics and I want to do 100 times the size of that in this series but let's see anyway over here's another power source started on the medium solar arrays bear in mind I hadn't played this well that long I was just getting started um, but then I blew myself up in real life just like I do in this in Minecraft funny enough and that's why I stopped with this world because my I could, weren't able to use the keyboard for a while which is what got me onto making uh, YouTube videos because I was inca incapacitated at the time after blowing myself up I had lots of time to think about what I wanted to do and I decided to make some Minecraft uh, some worm videos which led to one thing and another and here we are now full circle back to Minecraft anyway that's enough enough I've got I'm using tons of mods here but I barely scratched the surface let's exit out let's start from new so that's some of the stuff you can expect to see yes I like to use lots of mods 
Um, down here you can see we got 182 loaded up. Let's go into options. I had it set to peaceful because I didn't want a um, creeper blowing up all of my applied energistics. Okay, so I'm going to not cower down on this. I'm going to play it in normal mode. I'm not going to go silly and go to difficult because, again, I've had another break, so I've got a little rusty. I'll get, soon get back into it like EverQuest 2. Um, so we'll go with normal and there's all the rest of how I've got it set. I don't really need to show you anything else because that's really the only one that's important to show you that I'm playing it as normal. Okay, let's click done. Let's go to single player. Let's create a new world. So we'll call this Monster Series. Okay, now I don't know how many times I'm going to have to try, but I'm going to keep retrying till I see a world that I like. So you will no doubt have to do the same. There are certain things that I like to have near me at the beginning. One is a desert, so I can have access to cactus and also eat flat land, sand for glass. But I also like to have some trees. What I do not like is frozen zones. I hate frozen zones. You try setting up a quarry in a frozen zone and the quarry will be going for the next six years because it keeps freezing over every time it tries to quarry down, especially at the beginning when things are slow. So we're not going to waste time with that. We're going to save and quit. We're going to go back to single player. We're going to find the monster series. We're going to delete it. Yes, goodbye. We're going to create a new world. <coughs> We'll rename it. Yes, I know it's repetitive, but it's worth it for if we can find a half decent world. Also, to have a village nearby wouldn't go amiss, although I'm not too worried because we can go exploring for that. And no doubt I'll build some contraption that will get us there. But for now, let's just try and get a half decent world. Well, it's looking, yeah, this is looking okay. I don't mind if there ain't too much desert. I'll just have to go find, yeah, same to you and all. I'll just have to go and find some cactus off camera, perhaps. Right, now, so, if we are starting this world, which I'm going to, because I can't keep showing you restarting, um, the first thing is, remove books from here. Yep, brilliant mod, open blocks, we'll be definitely using that. We're on a timer. First thing we need to do is quickly get wood, get tools, kill sheep, uh, build a small rudimentary base, build a bed so we can pass the night time by safely because if we don't uh, meet that objective we're going to be dying by a creeper blowing us up or some other nasty killing us. So time is ticking, we're on a race, we need to get a bit of wood, enough wood to be able to make some torches, enough wood to be able to make our first crafting bench and enough wood to make some tools. There'll be wooden tools but we're going to quickly build ourselves a rudimentary base thereby getting access to stone and turning the tools into stone. We will not destroy the wooden tools, we will use them to fire our first furnace. Everything has a use, everything is precious, time is precious right at the beginning. We're on a constant race to get this early bit done before night time comes. So this should hopefully be enough wood just to get us started. I'm so glad there's sheep around. Okay so let's get started. What we do press the E key takes you into the inventory. We want to now first get grit some oak wood planks, right click grabs the lot. Now what we'll do, we will turn them into a crafting table. We will then put that back into the crafting place and turn it into a crafting station. The benefit that this has over this is when we place this on the ground, if we fill it with items and exit it, it doesn't drop all the items on the ground. If we place a crafting table and, and leave items in it and exit, they'll all drop on the ground. So that's why we choose the crafting station. So let's put it down there you go now just to show you what I'm waffling about exit out notice it don't fall on the ground like it would with a normal crafting bench let's grab the app food because that is 
the apple because that'll be food right there you go so we've got that now what we need to do next quickly make some sticks there you go we got sticks now what we need to do quickly grit some more planks got them good right let's make some tools so we will need a pickaxe we will need a I'm not going to make a sword yet but we will most certainly whoops what am I doing we will most certainly need an axe okay that's all I'm going to worry about for tools wise because I intend to get us a nice stone axe a stone weapon and stone axe and all the rest of it okay time is ticking now for the first base the first objective is get ourselves somewhere safe so what I should also do is do a shovel would make good sense okay there we go right so let's get our shovel let's do some digging and get ourselves safe the dirt will be useful everything is useful everything has a use especially when you've got 182 mods to play with right okay now because the height of it you can see isn't very high what we will start to do now is we will take this underground so what I'll do is let's take it back one more let's start going down and then we're gonna go and find that sheep and have some fun with them right let's see that should be deep enough for now right all good stuff let's see so let's do that let's get rid of that remember we are on a timer the clock is constantly ticking notice I stopped using the shovel I don't want it destroyed because I'm going to use it in our first furnace as fuel okay so get enough stones to upgrade all of our tools plus also make enough space to start a rudimentary base I can't believe how lucky I am with them being sheep out there. Normally I have to run across endless maps to find sheep. Right, okay, that'll do for starters. Look at that, we've even got a bit of iron. So, first thing we do, go over here, axe, destroy work table, bring it into the safety of our den. As soon as it, Notice I only make it too high. I do not want... Um, oh, I've forgotten what their name is. Anyway... Let's quickly do this and hopefully eventually I'll remember what I was talking about if I ever knew in the first place. Right, let's put down the crafting bench just there. There you go, not too much messing around. Now what we need to do, let's upgrade some of our stuff. So first thing to upgrade is we want a weapon. So we get a sword. Okay, next thing to upgrade is our pickaxe there you go next thing to upgrade is our hatchet or stone axe there you go right next thing to do is a shovel so there we go right okay that's enough tools we need to slice up and dice up some sheep because the clock is ticking and we are on a time limit hello nice sheep and goodbye nice sheep right that's one down now notice we got a nice bit of mutton we can cook that up for some food but we got some wool we need three pieces of wool and we need them desperately before it gets to night time I'm sure I could hear more sheep yeah I could hear one then probably hide it oh there he is right okay and goodbye to you too now we should have two wool we need one more I think we're doing very well 
Still need to put a door and build the front of the base to keep their monsters out, but here we go, we've got enough wall. Cool. Right. And I don't want to leave this one lonely, so let's get him as well. Right, okay, now, very first thing to do when you've done yourself a base, what I like to do is I like to go above the base if I can, a, a ways like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a waypoint because we could get lost. So we go to waypoints, we go to add, and in here we we'll call it base one because you know what, we're probably going to move at some point, but for now we'll call it base one. Okay, exit out of there. Now what we've done there is if I go straying off mindlessly like I do in quite a few games and get totally lost, now I only have to look and I've got a waypoint. Notice some of the mods that what some of the things that some of the mods are doing. For example, when I go over the dirt or certain items, so let's go in here, you see how it's telling me or dictionary is helping by telling us some of the items and giving us descriptions. You'll notice that little benefits, little perks. Um, especially when you're dealing with different resources. Anyway, so what we now need to do is make a bed because we don't want it to get to night time yet. So we have that, let's get rid of the grey wall, we don't want lots of different types and it'll help if I put them in the right place. There you go, we got ourselves a bed, we are now reasonably safe. Well, we are from darkness, we need to put a door on though first. So I'm going to put the bed just there, just to make sure we got it. Next thing to do, let's build some steps so we haven't got to keep messing around. First of all though, it looks like I'm low on stone, so we're going to need to mine. At least we got a quicker pickaxe now, and access to more iron by the looks of it. Wow, Minecraft's being kind to me. Okay, so I'm just expanding a little bit. That should be enough resources now. I was gonna do the stairs, but what's more important, of course, is to get the outside done. Now, we will be attacked by creatures that blow up, namely creepers. And notice, with cobblestone, no blast resistance. With basalt cobblestone, we've got a 40% blast resistance. So if you was to ask me, what's the best material to make the outside of your base? Well, there you go, basalt. Because if a creeper comes looking for me to blow me up, he isn't gonna have much luck. Well, he might blow the door off, but there's only so much we can do. So let's quickly get this assembled because as you can see it's starting to get dark. I'm not too worried because we have a bed and I can sleep. And what I will do is eventually turn all the outer shell into basalt. That way if a creeper does come knocking, he's not going to be able to blast through it. Okay, well, I'll expand that, but what we need to do now is sleep. Okay, right, now we need to make ourselves a door. Okay, there's the door. Let's now put the door on. Can't call it a base without a door, can we? So, Right, okay, there's our door. Now, the next most important thing for us to focus on is, although we have a bed and we can turn night to day nice and quickly now, there is still a risk of creatures spawning if we leave it too long. So, our next objective, most important thing to do, is to get a load of wood, and let's show you why. Hopefully some of you are going to appreciate this next step that we're doing.
I like doing the oak trees first because you get the occasional apple which is handy but I mean we have got a bit of mutton now to eat as well yeah 182 mods I mean I can't even start to tell you how much different types of experiments and all sorts of contraptions we can build it's just like a mad scientist's holiday if you like and I am the mad scientist now I've got to say though I don't ever touch programming tried it once didn't enjoy it so you won't be seeing no programming uh, there are others I know that do very good job of that in YouTube so I'll leave that to them for me I'm just gonna have some fun and show you my mad way of playing Minecraft okay there are other tall trees you know what we're so gonna head for Tinker's Construct because them trees can kiss goodbye to their existence once we get ourselves an axe with that for now we'll stick to the little oak trees and gathering the apples and the wood we need lots and lots of wood we're going to automate wood collection like I showed you in that glimpse at the beginning and what a lot of fun that is but until then we are going to have a tedious time having to manually gather resources and Tinker's Construct will make it a bit easier and more pleasurable but you can't be automating everything yes I'm lazy why not that's why Minecraft was made for us out there that like it all streamlined and automated okay Right, let's give you a demonstration of why I'm gathering all this wood and why it's so important. With the press of one key, you will be illuminated. By pressing the F7 key, it brings up this overlay grid on the ground. Yellow tells us that, that it is dark enough for there to be a chance of a monster spawning anywhere where you see this yellow frame. If the frame was red, it says it would tell us that even though it's daylight and daytime a monster could spawn there if it's yellow it's telling us a monster will only spawn if it gets dark enough so what we want to do as our first objective around our base whether it's temporary or permanent doesn't matter the first thing that we must do is put down a mass of torches to get rid of all of that yellow grid because and look in here we've got a risk of a monster spawning in my base at any moment but in order to do that we need first a furnace because we will need charcoal so that is why we wanted loads of wood so let's put it there let's um, put that in there for now and that in there we need torches lots and lots of torches in order to make all them torches we need lots and lots of wood we will only sacrifice one wood then we will switch to the charcoal and now we will get ourselves as much as we can before monsters start spawning inside my base okay one to quickly make four now the reason I do it too high is because I don't want endermen coming in here and ripping up my walls bed and everything else I keep it to a maximum of two tiles tall that way I haven't got to worry about that so let's correct that little mistake there okay so we can only spawn there if an enderman comes in and he can whip my forge good luck to him if he does he can have it if he wants it that much for now let's make some torches to stop the risk of monsters spawning in my beloved base so let's stick a torch there let's stick a torch there there we go oh one more there our little area is a safe haven nothing can spawn in here now but we need to make the outside as safe so that's what we will work on doing next we will gather up seeds food is going to be in short supply even though I've got a bit we still will be growing crops the crops have many uses as probably a lot of you know but we're going to get into animal farming and automating it we're going to need lots of crops in order to do that so we will be planting lots of fields we're starting right at the beginning so we will be gathering 
and farming lots and lots until of course we can get it all automated now one of the first things oh there's the timer so just to quickly show you what I'm gonna do I know the time has gone and I'm on a quick rush so I'm just gonna quickly place some outside to give you an idea once you do this every bit of area you get rid of that uh, yellow less risk of you coming back late to your base and it being filled up with creepers and all sorts of nasties especially even when you turn night to daytime there is a chance that there may still be a creeper roaming nearby so to eliminate that we just surround the whole area with torches and get rid of that yellow the yellow crosses and we'll do it all around our base so I'm going to carry on doing that eliminating all the yellow crosses no point in wasting your precious time I hope you've enjoyed this episode there is so much for me to cover come on now 182 mods I'm still probably going to be going in 10 years time let's see if I live that long shall we wherever you are in the world God bless you and keep every last one of you safe thank you for watching and have a fantastic day Goodbye.